What's up, everyone? This is Tatum. I'm back with another episode of Flowers. Flowers is my segment where I like to give some albums that uh, I feel that aren't so much appreciated and also are appreciated to uh, just their flowers and recognition, a little quick review. And today I'm finally uh, discussing an album that I think is so important to hip hop. And I'll get into that the further I discuss it. But tonight I'm giving flowers to the Fugees, the score. I always have this debate, especially recently, uh, how hip hop, and and I'll just say this: going talking to some people in my comments, you start to see the lack of respect for hip hop music, especially when I'm doing these other genre reviews and everything like that. And I'll mention things like, why isn't this hip hop album revered or held to the same light, or why didn't win this award, blah blah blah, when it's just as impactful and did what it was supposed to do you know i like to think the score is one of those hip-hop albums that transcends hip-hop and the numbers speak for itself 17 uh, times platinum it's one of those albums that i feel like help hip-hop not be so much understood but palatable and not in a bad way like a commercial sellout type shit but it made it like oh they are creative and on the flip side of that i think uh the score is one of those albums that Hip hop is always sample centered, but I think like the way that they did it on this album, it was just different. Like I can't put my finger on it. And obviously for everybody who was alive during that time when it actually dropped, uh, feel free to comment and uh, let me know how you felt about the score when it first came out and what was your expectations for? I mean, not expectations, but let me know what did you, what was, what did, what, what was it like to live it? Because I was like, this dropped 1996, February. I believe it came out the same day as All Eyes On Me, which is like amazing day for hip hop. The album came out February 13th. So we're just a couple days uh, after, we're just a couple days past the anniversary. Fuck, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> this album's coming off, uh, it's the second, is it the second Fuji album? Yeah, the second Fuji album uh, after Blunted On Reality, which was like a critical and commercial failure on all sides, I think. Um, What's the remix? Snappy Head. Well, first, I can't believe they even got a budget for the second album because the first album did so bad. And two, look at the singles on here. Fuji La, which was just, I remember that video as a kid. Like, this shit is amazing. And I think the video cost like a million dollars, which is nuts. Uh, Killing Me Softly, insane. Ready or Not, insane. Those three songs. And then the fourth single was uh, the cover of No Woman, No Cry. But those three singles are fucking monstrous. And it helped... Uh, to be honest, man, it helped Lauren really shine. I think it's how many mics when Wyclef mentioned, like, uh, the girl should go solo. And it also showed fucking Wyclef genius as a producer. Uh, him and Lauren, I was looking at the credits today, and it has Lauren Hill a lot for the in a, as a producer in here. I wonder, was it like that when the album was originally released? If somebody has their old Fuji score album, uh, let me know do you see Lauren Hill as a producer on the records but besides the singles you have how many mics Fuji La you have Zealots uh, you have The Beast I think one of my favorite songs on here is the the title track the score uh, I feel like that production on there it was very cinematic this album is called the score so duh but the album itself is very cinematic even uh, down to the skits the intro to the Chinese story and that sample on The Beast it's another song i think it's a cypress hill song i could be mistaken but i swear they sample the same thing uh let me know in the comments if if i'm right or wrong or and just let me know the sample <laughs> or what other group uh what other artists use that sample because it sounds so familiar i think it's cypress hill though but that uh chinese restaurant skit will probably never fly today <laughs> i'm listening back to it today and i'm like uh, I don't know. I don't know if you could do this anymore. Uh, at Family Business at the end, it goes into uh, Lauren Hill doing the the sound clash kind of thing. And then at the end of it, it says, you requested it, so we rewind. And then it goes into Killing Me Softly. I'm pretty sure it was like not the easiest song to get cleared at the time, but it's dope they did. And I also realized that with those singles like Fuji La or uh, Killing Me Softly or Ready or Not, so like all these songs, which is very 90s hip hop, is like they will grab these songs that you know, like kind of like the Diddy type shit. Uh, they would take these songs that you're familiar with, but put a little twist on it. So when you hear Killing Me Softly, you know it is recognizable. But then that 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 drum pattern comes in like from a 
bum, bum, like Benita Applebaum type shit. You know what I mean? And making even bigger records. I thought it was just dope because those those records helped this album. Like I think I read that it's it became the best selling album by by hip hop American hip hop artist in France, uh, which is crazy. For this to be like their second and last album. <laughs> I know that record company has to be pissed with all of them. <laughs> you know what's also dope on here, going back to the re-listen? Hearing uh, Lauren and Rod Digger go back and forth. I feel like they sounded close to each other and they complimented each other very well. Also, on the listen back, <laughs> I felt like Proz was barely on here. Like I felt like Proz just like snuck in every third verse of every third song and like said like eight bars let me know if that's just me but overall this album is fucking just just classic all around like i said it 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 has that um it gave it's a hip-hop album that's very it just helped hip-hop in a lot of ways i'm, I'm kind of done trying to find a way to say it but it's one of those albums again it just helped hip-hop reach the masses in ways that we weren't at the time. Let me get into my favorite songs though. I'm gonna try to pick songs that's not the singles. Cause obviously Ready or Not, Killing Me Softly and uh, Fuji La are probably, Is let me ask a question. Leave it in the comments. Is, is this one of the few albums where the singles are actually the best songs on the album? So I'm gonna try to pick some outside of those. I'm gonna go uh, How Many Mics, The Score, and Zealots. Uh, what, what? Dun, 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 dun. My rhymes, even that, even uh, even taking that sample, and I read that they had like a hundred some thousand. This is the last thing I'll say before I end this video. I heard like they had like a hundred and some thousand dollars for the budget and then uh, for the album, and they used that to buy equipment and set up in Wyclef's like parents or uncle's basement or something like that and that's like the dopest shit ever like and smart at the same time because it helped them it gave them time to craft and uh, be more creative and get more into producing if you have the time if you're on a studio time you always feel like i gotta get this done i got like it, it's 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 something in your brain but if you're at home and you got time and it just sit and just craft this idea i think it just it, it, that shows the genius of them as well so i just i just had to mention that as well even the cover is fucking the cover is uh you ever notice with every classic album the cover is classic <laughs> does the album make the cover classic or is it the other way around name a classic album that the cover is trash let me know some of your favorite songs of the fuji's the score let me know what this album meant to you do you remember i like to talk to people who were alive in outside when the album came out like i was sick so i heard it but i didn't hear it like i didn't i wasn't in it you know what i mean i had to figure that out after so i love to hear from people who actually lived through the time and can just tell me how that was how that felt because you had this and all eyes on me on the same day and it feels like on certain songs on the score they were dissing artists like a tupac which is probably why he dissed him. But yeah, let me know in the comments some of your favorite songs on here. Where does the score hold up in your uh, in your ranking of hip-hop classics? Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like always, man. Flowers to the Fugees, the score, Proz, Lauryn Hill, Miss Lauryn Hill, uh, Wyclef. All legends, all goats uh, should be congratulated more. Even Proz, man. I used to be dancing as a kid to the... Uh, Ghetto superstar. <laughs> I'm Tatum. Peace, man.